speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. God, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. And Father, I thank you right now that, that the Holy Spirit has the liberty to move up and down every aisle, in and out of every road, touch, heal, deliver those who are captive and those who are believing you, God, for a miracle. Now, Father, I thank you right now that your un unadulterated word will not fall on deaf ears. Therefore, all ears are anointed to hear your word. All ears are anointed to hear your voice. All hearts are good ground to receive that word and produce 100-fold. Now, Father God, right now we die to self as the word comes forth. We die to self-pride as the word comes forth. And God, we pick up our cross and we say, you know what? Nothing else matters but you. God, there's no future without you. God, we owe it all to you. We love you, Lord. We praise your name. We lift your name on high. God, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our children. We thank you for the daily bread we receive this morning, God. God, we thank you for the air that's in our lungs, God. For some people didn't wake up this morning. Some people didn't make it to the destination this morning. But God, you are faithful. And the angels guarded us. And we're here. And we lift your name on high. And we praise your name, God. And we declare you are Lord of lords and you are kings of kings. And it's in Jesus' name. And Excel Church said, Amen. go ahead and shout about that. Before you take your seats, go ahead and find you two or three people. Love on them, encourage them, engage them, empower them, enrich them. Hallelujah. the Bible, slip your hands up. Ushers can get you one. We want you guys to follow along with us as we go through the Word of God. We're in a powerful series called The Five Levels of Biblical Finances. And, you know, as a believer, it's okay to have your pocket, your pocket changed, right? Amen? amen? Somebody say amen to that. Amen. It's okay to have your pocket changed, right? Look cologne, good cologne on, good perfume on, smelling good. You know, a little, little, little change in your pocket as a believer. You know, when Jesus says the poor you will always have with you, he's speaking to mindset. He said, some people are going to be so religious, they can't hear nothing. Some people are going to think their dead works is going to get them somewhere. He said, no, 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 no. He said, those kind of people right there who don't want to renew their minds, it's got to be a certain way for them to hear, you know, all this kind of stuff and hear my word and receive my word. He said, they're going to always be with you. And you don't shun them. You still love them, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. But, 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 but just like he told the disciples, uh, let the dead bury the dead, and you got to keep going. Amen. You got to keep going. You know, we're heading into our family series in August, and, and man, I, I, I love my kids. Man, I love them. I, I love them, you know, not hero love. I, I love them enough to, to leave them something when I die. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm working on that. I've been working on that for 10 years, and I love them. But here's the bottom line. If they decide, ah, no more God, okay, you can remain a son. You can remain a daughter. But you don't stop the works of God in our life. You're not going to do that. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. And, and you'll be at the Thanksgiving table. We'll, we'll, we'll be there when you birth the babies. We'll be grandparents, all that kind of stuff. We won't shun you. We won't, we won't kick you out of the family. Why? Because you're blood. But if you're asking me to stop doing what I'm doing for God because you got a problem with it, it just it won't happen. Now, biblical finances, the five levels, uh, I, I was thinking about this all week. A lot of people may think that I'm preaching budget your finances message. Budgeting is important, but it's all action-based. I'm going to budget to get this pressure off of me. I'm going to budget to have some extra money. Good thing. I'm going to budget so I can save some money. Good thing. But it's all action-based. That is why it tapers off when the excitement leaves. I want you to write this in your notes. Mastering money is boring. That is why you're more excited when money leaves you 
than you are when you got to sit down and figure out how to preserve it. That is why you and your wife can sit down and say, hey, let's plan this vacation. Let's plan this furniture purchase. Let's plan these. Let's go get these sheets. Let's go get this iron. And everybody's gung-ho. The wife is grabbing bags and turning the food off the stove, turn, turning the food off. And she's, okay, let's go. Let's go to Kirkland's. We're going to go get some walls. Let's go. And everybody's excited. Everybody adjust. But the minute a husband or wife says, hey, let's sit down and make sure that we got everything together, da 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 why do you start arguing? Why, do you, why does it get so tense when we have to sit down and talk about the preservation of money, but when we've got to release it from us to corporations? Man, we bond over that. That's backwards. Hyperconsumption is the greatest enemy to what we're going to talk about today. It's the greatest enemy to you creating generational wealth. You just consume. And I was doing research this week, and it said, the guy was talking about millennials. <laughs> he said, he said let, me, let, me just, let me just dispel this, this myth that millennials drive this economy. He said they don't. He said they don't drive this economy. He said they may drive social media. <laughs> they may do that. He said, but they don't drive Wall Street. And he said, what you got to be careful of, and I was telling my son this last night, you got to be careful as a millennial thinking the world owes you something. And you're changing the way things are going in this world. The only thing that's changed is social media. But Wall Street is still trucking. They're still trucking with investments. They're still trucking with people who say, you know what, I don't even know what, what, what is social media. What is, I'm, I'm not even on it. They're focused on the markets of the world. But, 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 but the idea that a group of people is just going to change everything from baby boomers. I was a baby boomer. A lot of us in this room were baby boomers. But now you got, you got Generation X, you got millennials, you got all this kind of stuff. And it said, listen, they're not, they're not dictating the market. They're just infested and in, grafted in social media. And I told my son, I said, listen, that research said that 63%, it's three years of research, 63% of millennials spend their time surfing to spend says so 6% of them spend their time surfing to invest. He said most of their time on the internet is to be seen and to shop and spend money. He said nobody's, it, 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 nobody's researching how to invest their money. Nobody's researching how to, how to create generational wealth. Nobody's understanding. Listen, no one's going to give you anything. Wall Street's not going to give you anything. And if social media disappeared tomorrow, what do you have? Think about that. The only time they get on the net is to be seen or to spend money. And watch this. Finance a presentation of prosperity. But they ain't learning nothing. So we're talking about the five levels of biblical finance. And I really want you to dig down because God has something special for you. He has something special for me. It's a Pandora box that says Everything that's in this box, the life that you imagine about is right here in this box, and I want to show you how to get it. So the five levels of biblical finance. Now, media has some slides. We're just going to roll through this review real quick, if they can pull them up, uh, so you can see it for yourself and just refresh yourself. The five levels of biblical finance, that's the, that's the name of the series we're in. Next slide. Provision. Provision is simply this. We learned step number one in the five levels is, level number one is God will provide. And that simply means I don't have enough money coming in to meet all of my needs every single month. But God, Jehovah Jireh, is taking care of me. How many people know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Next level. Sufficiency. This simply says you have enough. Your needs, watch this now, n not drug dealers, not, not painkiller pu pushers, uh, not stealing stuff, not, not doing that. Your needs are legitimately met. Simply means I'm in sufficiency. I require, watch this now, no assistance or aid to live my life every 30 days. Somebody said, well, I got to borrow from my dad to pay my car note. I got my own place, but I got to borrow from my dad to pay my, help me pay my rent. Da, 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 da. You're not in sufficiency. Why? You're not meeting your needs by yourself. Well, I'm 27 years old, and, 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 and I'm, I'm in sufficiency. Are you? You got your own place? No, I stay with my parents. You're in provision. Why? You require assistance to have that life. You have a room in a four-bedroom house 
that they pay the mortgage, they pay the JA, they, they put the food in there, they pay the pest control, they pay the cable that you watch, they pay for the water that you use to shower, they pay for the gas that you use to, to cook the food. They pay for it all, and guess what? You're not in, you're not in sufficiency, you're in, you're, you're, you're in provision. Next level. Abundance. Now this right here, you can leave it up to the media, this right here simply means, look at it. How many people like extra? <laughs> How many people like disposable income? Somebody said, what is disposable income? Listen to me. It's extra that has no demand on it. And you got to be careful when you hit this stage because what happens is people go, people pre-commit their promotion, their tax returns, and their extra because they never train themselves to know this right here. It's not about the amount of money you make. It's about the habits you develop to handle the money you make. Let me say that again. It's not about the amount of money you make. It's, 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 the, it's the habits you develop to handle the money you're going to make. That's why mastering your finances cannot be action-based. It has to be habit-based. How many people do you know action-based came out of debt back in it? How many people do you know action-based, send the letters off, delete the credit bureau, delete the thing, delete the thing, got, got, I got an 800 credit score, got all the credit cards, and now they're back in debt again, action-based. But I know some people who are making $20,000 a year and say, watch me and God. And I'm, 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 I'm going to come out of debt. I'm going to get my credit together. But I am, I, am, I, am, I am feeding my financial literacy as I come out. I am feeding my emotional intellect concerning money as I come out. So therefore, as I'm coming out of debt, I understand how to stay out. Therefore, as I'm building my credit, I understand how to manage my credit now. See, a lot of people say, hey, look, I can get your credit clean and don't even deal with you on how to manage it. So, boy, you're getting all these pre-qualified letters and, and, and man, you, 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 the credit cards are coming and, 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 and you got a situation coming up and you, you say, oh, my God, I got, I got three credit cards to handle this. And it's like, what are you doing? How many times are you going to swipe that card outside of it, swiping that card for strategy and function? You're swiping that card for lust now. You're swiping that card to cover your lack now. You're swiping that card to cover your dysfunction now. And then you look up, and they say, once you get over 30%, that's not good on your credit. So you got a $1,000 credit card. Once you pop over $300 balance on that thing, they're saying, hey, hey, slow down now. You got a $5,000 credit card. Once you pop up a $1,500 on that thing, they're saying, oh, 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 oh now, oh, now. Let's, let's, let's just get it back down. And that is there for a reason. That is there because they understand once you cross over 30%, you're going to need an influx of cash to get that thing to zero. Why? The habits are not there to, build, to push it down. You're going to keep charging it. You're going to keep swiping it. And now you're at $3,000. Now you're at 80%. And some people max it out. They, 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 they close the card, they still have to pay it at 19%, and they just chip away at the minimum payment. Why would they do that on a $5,000 card? They don't have $5,000 disposable income to pay it off. Here's a rule of thumb with your credit. Here's a rule of thumb. Never charge what you can't pay off in 90 days. If you got 200 bucks disposable income and you just charge $2,500, you... you, you <laughs> You, 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 just be, you just may be a victim of interest, compound interest working against you and not working for you. The beauty to compound interest is it's not regular interest. <laughs> it compounds daily. I think there's two more entities left in the world that compounds daily. That's credit card interest debt, credit card companies, and, and the, payday, the payday loan folks. They, they compound daily. Can you imagine compound interest working for you? Can you imagine that? Wait a minute, let me see. Uh, maybe the church been ratchet up here. Um, can you imagine compound interest working for you? See, that's what I'm saying. This, 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 this is foreign lingo. It's like we like to stand around and talk about how much, you know, uh, uh, Drake is making and, 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 and talk about Cardi B and I like it and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, man, I, man, look, look, I'm talking about me, my future, my house. I'm tired of talking about that. Tell me about your investments. Let's talk about that. Young couple, you about to get married? Tell me about y'all finances. What, 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 what are you building? Because the marriage, the, the excitement is going to be gone after six months. You had a ceremony, but you're getting married all your life. She's changing, you're changing, kids are coming along, jobs are shifting, life is shifting. This, this, this. Tell me about what are you going to build together? 
That's going to be exciting for you. So let me, let me see the next slide. The iceberg money principle. The iceberg on the left is what we call material rich. Do you notice that the iceberg is upside down? What does that mean? Everything I got, you see it. <laughs> Leave it up there, media. Everything I got is on my back. It's, 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 it's in my hands when I drive it. It's, it's, it's what I live in. And, and, and what it is, your iceberg is flipped upside down, and, it, and people see your entire prosperity on your back. The four wheels you roll in. The purse you carry. I'm not trying to train nobody the boat you bought and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, you're just material rich. But over there on the side, on the other side, see that iceberg? It's a little bit peeking out. But down here, you can't see what's happening. They're spending, I'm researching. They're spending, I'm trying to figure out where's Facebook going to be in a year from now. They're spending, I'm watching Amazon and what they're doing. They're spending, I'm watching Instacart. I'm, 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 I'm down here researching and watching because I know what's happening down here is what we call generational wealth. I can't believe you're a pastor and you drive a Honda Accord. Believe it, baby. V6, leather, Bluetooth, sunroof, skit scat. I can get out there when I want to. Get me from A to B. I mean, I be, hey, hey, believe it. Heated seats. You know what I'm saying? It navigate the, the whole nine. But here's the bottom line. I looked at that car and said, why would I go over here to a 7 Series BMW? Now, the big boy's nice now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong now. You know, you prosper in proportion to your, I mean, you, you can purchase in proportion to your extra. You know, you, you ever get to a place where, man, that's just pocket change for me. That 7 Series is coming. <laughs> it's coming. But I'll never purchase a 7 Series above my generational wealth plan. I'll never forego my generations to ride in a luxury and look material rich. I will never, ever do that. But church will train you to do that if you're not careful. Why? Because the pastor can get up and talk about what he did, what he got, who gave him this, who gave him that, this, that, and the other. And, and I, I, remember, I remember sitting down in South Carolina, and my pastor was preaching, and, 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 and I'm sitting there as a member, and, and, and he said, look, we prosper on a different model. He said, ain't nobody walking in church talking about no pastor appreciation for you. And I sit there as a, as an bear. I was like, why would you say that to me? He said, you got to go out there and you got to make yourself skillful. You got to make yourself valuable, make money, come in and honor God. He said, but ain't nobody thinking about you on no pastor's appreciation. He says, so please don't think nobody is, 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 is doing that. And I was like, oh, wow. Because when I was in Atlanta, I just knew somebody was going to walk up to me and world changers and pay my house off. I just knew, I was just a member. I just knew somebody was going to walk up to me and say, hey, you know, God, and God can do it. But, but, but you keep waiting on that kind of stuff. You've been waiting a long time. What, what do you do? Now, let me go out here and get this overtime. Let me go out here and get this degree. Let me go out here and up my skill to earn more money. Let me go out here and educate my financial literacy. Let, let, let me go out here and do that so I can increase my skill outside this door. But, but, but thinking that I'm, you know, profiting on his model, hey, no, no, don't do that. So I said, you know what? Let me master where I'm at. I'm out here as a common man. I said, it's going to feel real good to have X amount of dollars. It's going to feel real good to give X amount of dollars. It's going to feel real good to have my life together. And it feels real good to get in that hundred court and push it. Somebody said, well, what do you do when you go out of town and you got a few bags of luggage? I rent a van. Mm -hmm. Town and country. Two TVs, <laughs> plugs, six USB cords, uh, cooler in it, all kind of storage. I rent a Suburban, ride tall, Texas Cadillac, Wi-Fi, this, that, and the other, 500 bucks for five days. We glide down the road. Listen, when you pull up to the resort, don't nobody say, is that yours? <laughs> you know what they say, boy, they riding tall, lately. <laughs> don't nobody expect you when you pull up to the resort, now, what, uh, is that your Suburban? <laughs> is, is that your Yukon? Who cares? <laughs> well, see, when you buy that Yukon to floss, when you buy a Yukon to, to floss and pull up to that resort, you not only pay the $2,000 to be there for the week, but make sure you, 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 you pay that $1,200 on that truck when you get back and it's like, man, this thing has turned on me. So we're not talking about false prosperity. We're not talking about earning money to present something to the public to say, I'm doing well. What I'm saying right now, if you lost your job today and could not touch your 401k, how long could you pay your bills? Now that, that, that brings us down. So man, my bills are $3,000 a month. You got 36 grand if you do in the savings account, you can go a year and not even have to do nothing. Oh, my bills are $4,000 a month. Oh, good. You, if, if you got a year's worth of reserve, you can go one year at $48,000. You can go one year and not have to, have to lift a finger. Somebody said, well, look, man, I couldn't even go to Monday. That's not to shame you, but it's to say it's time out for earning to present. 
you got to earn to get that iceberg over there. And people go, I can't believe you downgraded your, your car for that. You know what you got to say? Iceberg, baby. I ain't got to show you nothing else. I, ain't gotta, I, I can't believe that you chose a Nine West purse on, on the 30th anniversary. Well, I got a Nine West purse with five grand in it. You got that little Louis Vuitton Fendi over there. You ain't got a dime to your name. Your iceberg is flipped upside down. And, and, and I'm not in that flipped upside down iceberg life anymore. I am in what you can't see is powerful, it's happening, and it's building my generations. Next slide. Next slide. What is an inheritance? It's something that is or may be inherited. Property, watch this now, property passing at the owner's death to the heir or those entitled to succeed him. And it says legacy. Leave that up there. I want you to look at that because that's where we're going today. As a parent, ask yourself, what am I leaving my kids? What am I leaving my kids? As As a parent, ask yourself, Am I prepared to leave my kids something? As a parent, as a believer, ask yourself this question too. You can write them all down. Am I prepared to die? You can either die with an inheritance or you can die and leave people with debt. I go home to be with the Lord. My kids are going to cry, kick, scream, kick over the, 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 the ward in the limo, tell the driver, I don't want any mints. I, I don't want no hang. I, I don't want any. I, I miss him. This, this, this. My wife is going to be falling out. They got a fanner, all this kind of stuff. Oh, will there ever be another Derek? Oh, just let me go over with him. I, I just can't. And, 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 and as soon as they get in that car and get settled down, leave the grave site. And my buddy walk in the house and go, I wanted to give you three days, and, and um, I wanted to give you guys three days to grieve and this, that, and the other. I know this is a, this is a rough time for you, and um, I didn't want to just bombard you with business. You know, you know, God's got his time, and I've got mine as the estate planner here. And I always talk to Derek about certain things. And matter of fact, can we go to a kitchen table where we can get kind of comfortable? You got any coffee, ma'am? Uh, yeah, man, g- give me some coffee there. Uh, how you doing, Marviante? You good? You doing good, buddy? Okay, good for you. Zari, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing good, sir. Okay, okay, and you, sweetheart. Um, Z, how are you doing? I'm, 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 I'm doing good. Go ahead and get to the paperwork. And he goes, um, <laughs> he goes now, he's, and he's going to say, now we're talking about generational wealth. He's going to say now, I'll tell you what now, the guy was funny. He, uh, but I tell you what, he took care of business for you. i tell you. And uh, let's just deal with the two hurricanes here. Uh, Harvey on 10 Zaria. Now, kids, one thing you know about your dad now, he wanted you to, you know, to really expand what he gave you now. And, and, and you want to just, just hear what I'm saying here. Now, Marvin, you're not married yet. Okay, no, you're, okay, Zaria, you're not married yet. Okay, he has in this trust here conditions. And you need to understand that he wanted you to continue to build your life. And right here, Marvin, he said, you got to go through 12 weeks of premarital counseling when you get married. And he wants you to do that. And Marviante goes, my God, he's still trying to run things from the grave. <laughs> now, I know that's what you're saying, son. He's trying to run things from the grave. And he is. That's what, that's, that's, that's what these irrevocable trusts do. And, uh, but I want you to know this. As soon as you finish that 12-week course, he got you down for 10 grand here. Now, now, how, now, now, now where do you want to sign up at? He says, shoot, I'm a, I'm a, let me email the church right now and get it going. <laughs> and, 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 and so they're crying. Now, all of a sudden, they're doing what they're doing right now. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look, he loved y'all. And, and, and all, all the tears are gone. They reflect. They got the picture up on the wall. Make them a tear to every now and then. But I tell you what, about two weeks into that thing, looking at this paperwork, they're going to go, God is good. <laughs> and he's worthy to be praised. Hey, your dad won't want us doing X, Y, and Z now, so, so we're, we're, he wouldn't want us doing that. He wants us to enjoy our lives, except you, mama. You can't get remarried. He, he, he don't want you to do that. <laughs> what am I saying? Put that thing back up. No, 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 no. Last slide. An inheritance pushes back. It pushes back against what the devil intended to be. Man, wipe the whole family out. Wipe that wife out. Wipe that husband out. Wipe them away from faith. Their faith actually gets stronger. Why? Because somebody, watch this now, prepared to die. And as a man of your household, you want to slow down. I mean, I got to build this business. Slow down. 
Man, I got to get this degree, degree. Slow down. Man, I got to do this. Slow down. And said, look, in 90 days, here's what I got to do. I got to be able to look you in your eyes, sweetheart, and let you know that I'm prepared to die. I got to be able to look at my kids walk out of that door and know I love them right here. I'm teaching them right here, but they are set. Now let me go home and build my life. Inheritance is something that is or may be inherited. Listen, there's a key word in here, maybe. Now, if you, you, you riding around acting a fool, trying to look cool, and you're the fourth child, don't be surprised. <laughs> if you get your little 5000 and the one who's the, 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 the steward of the money and they work with dad in the business and all this kind of stuff, always hanging out with dad and, and doing this, don't be surprised when you discover, oh, man, he left you. Oh, okay. All right. That's why I say maybe inheritor. Because my state planner told me a story. He said, listen, he said, I'm a Texas, so I'm a Texas boy. He said, my family had cattle. He said, we raised cattle, Texas Longhorns. So that's what we did. I said, okay, I hear you, brother. He said, uh, let me tell you a story about a businessman. He had two sons. One of them, if he got the inheritance, he'd have 18 Corvettes in 30 days. That's something with your brother. He said, the other one, he, he said, the other one always was with his daddy. Always be with him. Every time you say, oh, just, just living a good life with school and didn't give him no trouble, this, 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 this. He said, and that daddy told me, he said, now, $18 million, Derek, I'm talking about here. That's what he told me. $18 million I'm talking about here. He said, that daddy went 90% over here and 10% over here. He said, because people who build generational wealth, it's important for them, for the legacy, to keep going. And if you are action-based and you're earning your money, you're not going to keep going. You're going to have 18 Corvettes. If you have the habits, you're going to grow what daddy and mama or mom and daddy uh, or mom or dad alone left you. So listen to me when I tell you. You think your parents are not paying attention. They are. They're going to take care of you. But a legacy-minded man wants his legacy to get stronger. So i got to have the right people taking care of it. Amen? Next slide. Generational poverty is when we spend all of our money in one generation. Generational poverty is when we spend everything we have in one generation and nobody leaves nothing. Single moms, you're in on this too. Please don't think you're excluded. You need to get your life insurance, get your estate plan together. This is this. You need it more than anybody. Why? You don't have a man to fall back on. Your kids don't hold. You're single, and if you got two, three, four kids as a single lady, get that stuff in order and know who's going to get your kids if something happens to you. This is imperative that you do this. This is very important. Why? You're building generational wealth as a believer. So a poor generation, generational poverty, is when we spend all of our money in one generation. Proverbs 13. There you go. There you go, Lamont. Proverbs 13. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you know God is the Lord of the harvest, right? God wants us to prosper. God wants us to do well. And we was riding in, and I told my wife, hey, uh, I had to stop. Like I said, hey, uh, I just, j j just got some. I said, remind me when we get out of here, we gotta, let's sow another seed uh, uh, for the Grace Conference when we get out of here. What are we trying to do? You don't own me. I'm building a legacy. I ain't got time to be playing around with this two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. I ain't got time to do that. Release it. And every time you release, you're putting seed in the ground. I don't need that right now. You may not need it right now. One day you'll need it. One day you'll need it. Amen. Proverbs 13, 22. <clears throat> Proverbs 13, 22, very familiar scripture to those who are familiar with the generational wealth teaching. Uh, verse 22. A good man. Now, <clears throat> wives, stop thinking your husband got to be the smartest man on the planet. You just want a good man. Stop forcing your husband to be this status quo guy because the Bible dispels that myth. It says a good man. You can have a 12th grade education, 
qualify for this. You can drop out of high school, qualify for this. You, 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 can, you can do 20 years in prison, come out of prison, and while you're in prison, qualify for this. When you come out of prison, qualify for this. Why? The good man equalizes the playing field. What is he saying? This is available to every man. But this good man we're talking about, what does he do? Does he get his college degree? Does he get his PhD? Nothing wrong with that. Does he get his master? Nothing wrong with that. What does he do? He leaves. He leaves. He doesn't just earn to spend it on himself, to hoard it up. He's earning. He's budgeting. He's doing all these things to leave. Somebody say legacy. legacy. He leaves an inheritance. Now, a good man leaves an inheritance. Inheritance is all-encompassing because in that word, I got to leave you some character too. <laughs> I got to leave you some, some financial literacy too. That's going to be part of your inheritance. I got to leave you a good name you can follow too. See, as a parent, you got to be trailblazing. See, a lot of times your kid will force you to dress them sharp from head to toe, but you don't spend one hour a month sitting down with them, teaching them what this guy's talking about right here. Hey, what book are you reading? Hey, we're going to read this book as a family, and then we're going to come together once a month as a family. We're going to discuss this. Whatever. Why? Because, because I got to leave you more than money because this money will ruin you and money will trick you. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. I'm going to leave you an inheritance. And that is, listen, it's, it's, it's godly character. It's financial character. It's, 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 it's my dad worked in the community. My dad served in church. I seen them. They went to church. All of this is in, in the inheritance, along with somebody say money. It's not a bad word in church. It's right up there with oxygen. You don't believe it? Walk in public and say, the Lord told me to grab this loaf of bread and walk out of here. <laughs> Watch how quick that 17-year-old trip you up. <laughs> so we got, you know, money, you got to have it to live in this world. <laughs> when I was at World Changes, a guy walked in, Carrie's house, some sadies right there on Flat Shows Road, and uh, he was in the financial teaching, walked in and, and, and walked in over to that S600 and said, oh, the Lord told me to come in here and lay my hands on this car, and it will be mine. Woo! The wealth of the unjust is transferred over to the righteous. And they say, okay, let's run your credit. How much money do you make? Take your tongues, take your land on of hands, set that to the side, and give me nine digits. Well, no. No. Nine. That's right. Give me nine digits. Keep your Holy Ghost to yourself. Pray on your breath. Go in the bathroom. What you got to do? Because we're getting ready to see if you even qualify to be talking about this car. We got to stop being so spiritual and, and dumb and deep with money. Look, it, it, math is math. Two times two is four. In Jacksonville, Atlanta, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Russia, Czechoslovakia, Spain, Greece, United Kingdom. Two times two is four. So a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children now. Huh. Let me say something to the first set of children. You can't be jealous at the second set. Because the first set are sitting in this room right now. Jeff, you're the first set, son. You're the first set. And your parents look, I'm going to leave some uh, money in our plan to your children. You go, I don't have any kids. They go, we know that. But we can pay to set it up, to skip a generation, and start funding grandkids we don't even have. And you're going to want us to do that. Why? Because we're going to pay for their college. We're going to pay for everything. That's what we're doing for you. So, so, so what am I doing? You start working on your grandkids. Boy, this is so powerful to me. A good man leaves inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. There's stuff laid up for the fair. <laughs> There's stuff laid up for the righteous. That's why you confess every single day, Lord, I receive expected income, my paycheck, and I receive unexpected income. Well, what's unexpected income? Is stuff just laid up here that the, that the sinner is heaping up, doesn't realize that it's laid up for you. <clears throat> Somebody says, I don't believe that. You 
ever just went to spend some money and somebody say something like this to you? I don't even know why I'm doing this. Look, now don't tell nobody, but I'm going to go ahead and give you this deal on this car, but I don't even know why I'm doing this. Guess what that is? It's unexpected income coming back into your pocket, and it was laid up for you, just waiting on you. Amen? Amen. Uh, let me see the next slide before we get knee-deep in this thing. <sighs> is that the next slide? Hold on. Generational poverty. Uh, just hold it right there. Uh -huh. That's right. That's what I want to see. Now we can ready to get into something. Next slide, please. <laughs> All right. Write that down. My income earning factors. The Bible talks about I've given, you, I've given to those several abilities. I've given to this guy five talents. I've given to this guy two talents. I've given to this, this guy one talent. And what Jesus and what, 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 what God does is he observes, then he distributes. So this, there's no escape from what you're about to hear. But we have to talk about it. There's over 13 income streams in the Bible, over 13. Not just, <laughs> you know, selling aisles for dollars. There's 13 ways as a believer you'll make money. Now, income earning factors. Somebody say, this is sobering. See, my grandmama used to say, uh, don't get to the point where you smell yourself now. I said, wait, grandma, if I'm musty, I want to know it myself. <laughs> I don't want to be in the backseat of the car and got everybody's nose on fire. I want to know, I want to know it. But she said, look, don't, don't get to the point where you start smelling yourself. So a lot of times as believers, again, we think the world owes us something. But the world has one language. And they say, what can you solve for me? And based on you, what you can do for me, I distribute back to you accordingly. So you take a brain surgeon who out-earns professional athletes. You take a neurosurgeon who out-earns professional athletes. You take a hedge fund manager who makes their 10-year their contract in 12 months. So a lot of times what we think is the pinnacle is like, no, up, educate yourself. Please educate yourself. Why? Because you want to know these income factors. The first factor in your income, when somebody says, I'm going to give you some money, it's going to be according to your ability to do what you do. God gave us all talents and gifts and skills. And when you apply for that job or send that resume in, they are factoring in how good are you at what you do. There are some people that drive from the north side to St. Augustine to get their hair done. Well, my God, you just drove by a hundred sal salons. And you're going to go way to St. Augustine and, and, and pay 50% more? You're going to do that? Yeah, I'm going to do it. And that, and, that, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that beautician says, yeah, because of my ability to do what I do. People drive from everywhere, and they pay me 50% more. Why? because of my ability to do what I do. So while, while she has to stay open on Saturday from dark 30 to dark 30, I open up at 8 o'clock, I close at 3, and I make $4,000 on that day. Why? Because of my ability. That's why my income differs from hers. So you always, as a believer, want to work on your craft. The Bible says know the state of your flocks. Know what's happening, not just out there, what's happening in here. What am I putting in here that's going to propel someone to release more towards me. Do you hear what I'm saying? The next thing is the difficulty of what we do. These are all determining factors for income. So let's go back to the brain surgeon. He opens up your head. He works on the central focus point of how when you function in the whole nine, and he puts together veins smaller than your hair. He puts them back together, and you can talk again. And here's what they say. We're going to give you $120,000 an hour. And watch this. The difficulty of what we do, they're rare. But I'll tell you what. Go ahead and call him in. Send him a text and let him know, hey, she was life flighted down to Gainesville. We need him in here. Uh, it's not that simple. What do you mean? He's not in Lakeland? No. He's not in Jacksonville? No. Well, where the heck is he? Australia. He got a flying on a private jet. He's the only one who can, who, who can really go ahead and fix grandma right here. Okay, watch this now. The difficulty. 
he shows up one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. Give me six hundred plus thousand dollars. For what? Five hours? Five hours? Give it to me. <laughs> Why? The difficulty of what we do. The application stack is not that high. That stack comes down and it determines that income. So people go, man, I want to be a professional ball player. I want to be a professional. And it's like <laughs> the Jews go, we dispel that. We fix your brain. Matter of fact, we sew your limbs back together. Matter of fact, we, we own ABC. We control the media. You just listen to it. We control it. And they say, the difficulty of what we do and what we deal with, the income translates right along with it. The next thing, watch this now. <laughs> the difficulty of replacing us. If you're on your job kicking up, kicking up dust, stirring up sand, <laughs> got to look at the laws, the labor laws every, every, every 30 days to try to trip somebody up. They're going to be in that boardroom. They're going to say, listen, uh, listen, just, just, <laughs> we're just going to release him. We're going to release her. We, ju we, we just, my gosh, <laughs> and you're not that difficult to replace. But if you do your research now, companies are looking for people who can translate the vision over this high level of skill. How many people can you get on one accord with us? How, how many people can you get to see what we have in place? How many people can you... Oh, man, you got 150 in your department, and they all flow with division? Oh, we're going to pay you. Why? You're very difficult to replace. Here's one thing I know about a high-skilled person with a bad attitude. You're writing checks against your skill, sooner or later it's going to run out. Sooner or later they're going to look at your skill and go, you're very skilled at what you do. But the drama that comes along with you, the trail of blood that you leave in the department, the amount of people who goes home with knots in their stomach just because you're cracking the whip and you pride yourself on cracking, cracking the whip, there's a wave coming for you. They're going to say, they got their masters. They've been 20 years into this thing. But I tell you what, nobody in this company likes them. And we got, we, 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 we got to get them out of here. So the difficulty of replacing us determines our income factor. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> you can take it down. Uh, brother, I think Brother Jim's on the wheels still today. <sighs> Here's the thing. God and heaven equips us now to go out into the world and be, watch this, an ambassador for Christ, a disciple for Christ, watch this, and a servant. Those who take on the attitude of a servant on their job, they'll begin to meet all three of those. So you think you're very good at writing reports and letters. Somebody else is very good at keeping the department flowing in the right direction. So you think you're very good because you, you, you got your degree, you, you got a double degree and all this kind of stuff. But what you don't realize is your relationship skills, your relationship management is at a level three. You cannot manage different personalities. You ever know people like that? <laughs> when you get a little, little difficult one in the group, it's not... Just do what I say and we can just flow. No, you, 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 you got to figure out, okay, wait a minute now. All right, everybody's seen that, but John raises his hand every meeting. And he pushes back. There's nothing wrong with being objective, but if you think that you got to be objective on everything in every meeting, like you're going to save the company from itself, sooner or later, the, 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 the 90 people in the room are wondering, what are you talking about? Sure, we don't see everything we need to see, but there's a part of this job that says, you know what? I, I got to do something by faith that I can't see, and I'm going to flow with, with, with what the, uh, the CEO and the CFO has put in place. I'm, I'm going to flow with that. But boy, you, I'm the kind, my, my, my personality type when it comes to stuff like that is when I keep seeing a hand being raised, and I'm saying to myself, you just got the answer. You, you're not going to. What, is, what else do you want me to say? Uh, another question. I just cringe. I go, I go down in my seat. And they say something out of, out of the park. I, I go down in my seat. Because there's a part of me who understands in relationship management, you're not going to get all the answers. Sometimes, Derek, you just got to flow. You got to flow and do your work as unto the Lord and not wish the misfortune on the project that you're involved in because nobody will listen to you. You still got to be 100% in. And when you're like that, your income, it eases up. Amen? Amen? Now, when it talks about the difficulty of replacing us, you know, as a believer, you got to be kind. Galatians 5, 22, you got to have the fruit of the Spirit 
when you're building generational wealth. You, 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 because you, you're, you're out there on that job, and you're out there with people, and you have to know in your income, being kind is a big factor. It, 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 it's a big factor in what? The difficulty of replacing me. So what do I do? I generate positive experiences on my job. People feel good. People feel good when I come around. People don't, you know, I don't walk in the break room and people just, there he is. There she is. Why is she over there eating by herself? He ain't got no friends. Why is he over there? He, he has no friends. Why? He doesn't understand. Brother, in this income thing, as you build generational wealth, know this. When you go into that building, you are in one of those factors that we showed up there. The ability to do what I do. The difficulty of replacing me and the difficulty of doing what I do. Amen? Amen. Uh, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Part four, five levels of biblical finance. Here's what you got to know about that right there. The investment is underground. What you see up top, the money, the tree, the green leaves, everything that's happening up top, it's because I'm investing in the roots. And as you build generational wealth, you have to start investing in the roots. Otherwise, talks like this or messages like this, it's irritating. It's hurry up and let's get to the exciting part. And, and, and you got to know there's a reason why Roger Staubach, who quarterbacked the Dallas Cowboys, has a billion, multi-billion dollar real estate business. And the other guys are, don't have nothing. Mr. Jason, I don't have nothing. Why? Because, because you, you didn't go underground with this. You thought you was going to always be catching like you were when you were 16 years old. That's what you thought. So you didn't invest down here. There's a reason why Magic Johnson has all of these chains. There's a reason why LeBron has a, they said, LeBron, they said, oh, my God, why did he take 50-something million dollars? Oh, he's shortchanging himself. Until the financial actuaries said, no, 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 he didn't shortchange himself. Why? Because with all the sponsor deals, all of the Hollywood, in 365 days, it equates to him 139 every 12 months. He didn't shortchange himself. What has LeBron been doing? Working under here. Man, y'all think this ball is? You, 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 you think this is? You think this is? Some guys go, no, 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 no. I'm going underground to build something that my family can eat from. Next one. <clears throat> you see that? So I said, how do I get on the path to generational wealth? Underground, in your foundation, you got to make a deal with healthy habits as a believer. You got to shake hands. You got to agree at the root level with healthy financial habits. You got to make a deal with biblical financial uh, uh, habits, biblical financial literacy. And you don't make that above ground. You make it underground. You make it in the foundation. And you say, listen, here's the bottom line. We earn to give, we earn to live, and we earn to leave. Let's shake on that, sweetheart. We honor God, we honor people, we pay our future selves. Let's shake on that, sweetheart. Listen, we're building a legacy, we prepare to die, we leave our kids something, our grandkids something. Let's, 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 let's go ahead and agree on that. Why? Because once we agree at the root level, we don't argue about 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, $500 stuff. Why? We agreed at the root level. Do you hear what I'm saying? See, the world trains us. You can take it down, media. The world trains us to get excited about the above ground stuff. The Bible trains us to get excited about the below the ground stuff. Why? Because the highest biblical, financial biblical mandate we can meet is, are you leaving something? Are you leaving something to your generations? Are you preparing to die? Are you doing that? No, I'm, I'm just buying. I'm, I'm just hitting every sale that pops up. Matter of fact, I'm subscribed to Kohl's. I'm subscribed to this one. I'm subscribed. Here's what I tell you about your subscriptions in your email. Go and unsubscribe. <laughs> Do you understand? They are campaigning against you, against your extra. Subliminally, subconsciously, they're telling you 10% off, 20% off, 30% off, 40% off, da da da, da. And, 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 they, and they slowly pull that extra out of your pocket. When your husband goes, ho, 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 we're not doing that. They, they, they don't need that. You get mad at somebody who's trying to preserve your money. But you're trying to run and take it to the world. 
God, have mercy. Let's keep going. Got 20 minutes, and we'll hit the message. We're in it right now. <clears throat> Listen to me. <sighs> Wealth and riches. Now, wealth and riches requires time. Number one. Number two, wealth and riches requires a foundational relationship with God. It requires a foundational relationship with God and his financial principles. Wealth and riches requires a vision past today. We said last week, how far can you see down the road? Oh, my kid's only four years old. Can you see his son, which is your grandkid? Oh, my, my child is only five years old. Can you see their kids? Because if you can see them, you'll start preparing for them. How far can you see down your generations? How, because God is with you. He's trying to get you to, how far can you see? Man, I got four kids. How far can you see? Do you want, do you want her graduation, to, uh, to her to have a graduation present? Do you, want, do you want kid eight to have a house down payment? Kid two to have a house down payment? Kid three to have a house down payment? Kid four to have a house down payment? Because you could see. You say, you know what? I'm going to start preparing for them today. Why? I'm not so selfish that I want to live to the max now and deprive my generations of what they so rightfully, biblically deserve. So, so in Joshua 24, verse 12 through 14, he's listen. He said, I'm going to give you something, houses you didn't build. Let's look at it, Joshua 24. It's all about inheritance. My parents won't let me, you know, they're just so old school. They just, they can't see it the way we, we, we kid, us kids, we think today and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, man, look, would you please stop telling me that you're smarter than your parents? Please just stop. Please just stop. <laughs> well, she don't even know how to work an iPhone. Oh, that is the pinnacle of your intelligence. So Joshua, look at this now. <clears throat> Let me go back. Hold your place right there in Joshua 24. <clears throat> See, your parents... The, the, the notion that, we're talking about generation, the notion that you're 14 years old, <laughs> your parents are 40, they have 26 years on you. The notion that you have life figured out and they're wrong all the time? Look, I, I thought the same way. <laughs> he don't understand. He, he don't know what's going on. Until I got in that little house myself. I said, God, have mercy. My daddy, boy, he was right on the money with that right there. Man, kids are going to go their way. They're going to do what they want to do. Da, 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 da. The notion that you think you got it all figured out, here's what you do. Sit down with mom and dad and go, hey, you know that generation wealth he's talking about? Where am I in the equation? Where am I at? Now, we're not talking about 48 ID in 2020 and first 48. They're not going to knock you off. You, but you got you to sit down with them, sit down with your parents and go, w okay, he's talking about build what are we building? Why? This is a family effort. I want to be part of this legacy. I want to make this name stronger. So you mentioned something about reading books and all that kind of stuff. I got to read some books. I, it's got to be more than giving me an allowance. It's got to be more than giving me a car. It's got to be more than that. If you don't teach me how to manage this car, I'm going to get it. I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to wear it down. I'm going to wear the tire down. Because you gave me the car, you didn't teach me how to change no oil. You didn't teach me how to change no tires. You didn't teach me nothing. So when I get the car and everything's falling apart, it rolls right back uphill because you were action-based yourself. I have no habits to take care of a car. So Joshua 24, look, at, look in your books there. Can I see your thing, sweetheart? I'm away from the stage. Somebody said, did he say sweetheart? That's, what, that's how you talk when you're feeling good. <laughs> when that husband's feeling good, you sweetheart, you honey, and this, and that. You, 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 as a wife, you need to go, man, what did I do? What did, what did I say? And all you did was fix his coffee this morning. <clears throat> Verse 13. He, he, he's talking to Joshua. First, Moses has died. Joshua's leading the army now. He's listen. I have given you land for which you did not labor. This is what I'm saying to Marvion Tanzaria in my paperwork. And cities that you didn't build. 
This is what I'm saying to my grandkids. This is what you're saying to your grandkids. And watch this. You're going to be able to live off of what I left. And I've given you vineyards. It's going to keep producing year after year. And I've given you olive yards. It's going to produce them year after year, synonymous with earning interest, synonymous with your life insurance policy going into a trust, 6% in index funds or whatever it is, and, and, and at a million dollars is spending off $60,000 a year. It's synonymous with vineyards that keep producing. So we're not saying build wealth and riches and generational wealth for it to be spent up in one generation. That's why you got to teach them. Otherwise, they're going to be excited about getting more cars. They're going to put a Figaro uh, necklace around their neck and think they're, they're balling. No, I, no, no, I didn't do that for necklaces and jewelry. Just listen, you are inheriting things that you did not put in place. I planted some stuff, you're going to eat from it. I put stuff in place, you're going to eat from it. See, for us to let Christians come to church every single week and watch a loved one pass in their family and everybody gets into an uproar, because nobody has the money to bury them. For us to keep doing that and not teach, hey, 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 slow your life down. I know you want your certificate. I know you want your degree. Are you prepared to die yet? I know you want to start that business. Are you, are you prepared to die yet? You got everything in place? Why? Because why are you trying to build something and it's not even protected? That, that's, that's backwards thinking. Why are you investing in a 401k and who knows who's going to get it? Here's one thing I know. See, in an trust, they have, they have, in trust, they have what they call incentive trust. And you throw some incentives in there. If you do this, you get this. If you do this, you get this. But <clears throat> that's good. Spend time when you leave here today, the rest of the week. Spend time researching and looking over your beneficiary designations. Because a lot of you are remarried and don't realize if you ain't got stuff in order, something may go to your ex-spouse. Did you know that? You never went and did the paperwork right. You remarried again, and she's still the beneficiary on this policy that you don't forgot about. And she's like, let the Lord lead you. <laughs> so even in my life, and in our life, financial domain days are, okay, beneficiary. Let's go through beneficiary de designation. Uh, I, I noticed, you know, when we got into that little fickle uh, five years ago, you, you threw your mom on everything. You don't, think, you don't think people do that? You don't think Christians do that? You don't think they secretly, you know, girl, I don't know if he's the one for you. And, you know, and, and the, mama, the mama don't took care of you all her life. Da, da, da. Hey, what about that policy? You know what I'm going to do? Because he thinks he, and she thinks he's, I'm going to put you on it, mama. So if you know that happened, you better go back and research your beneficiary designation now. Go, hey, we, we good to go? Or is your daddy? No, no, ain't no daddy nothing. It's you. <laughs> hey, we good to go right here? Or is it your mama? You, no, 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 ain't no mama. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm the beneficiary. So you got to go and look at that before you take off building. You go, man, I'm divorced. Okay, if something happens to you, do your kids get everything that you built prior to your divorce? Or does the master planning ex-wife swoop in and go, look at God, an unexpected income laid up for the just. <laughs> So we're talking, about, we're talking about wealth and riches and generational wealth. You as a believer got to realize this stuff and, and come out of the clouds. Slow down. Let's speed up. Somebody said, how do you, uh, man, I'm telling you, when we was about to get that divorce, my daddy was in my ear. No word, no Jesus, uh, no prayer about it, no let the Holy Ghost lead you. What it was, get everything out of her name. I tried to tell you, and this six years into our marriage, I tried to tell you how to set yourself up. Now, you don't want to listen to me. You see, see, a hard head make a soft behind. And now here we are, right here today. Oh, you went off to North Carolina and met the love of your life. All oh, this stuff you're telling me. And now I'm telling you, get it all out of her name and get it over here in your name. But a seed went deep in me, too. This was shoot. We got a point there, huh? She's going to just stroll on off and be with somebody else. Let me, let me, let me. So you got to go and look at your beneficiary designations. Because a wife may think, I'm on everything. On to realize, no, you're not. You're not on that. Because when you told your husband, I really don't love you, you struck him deep. Now, he still love you and all that kind of stuff. Still go to church with you. But boy, he shifts some stuff around. God forbid we be honest in church. 
God built me on this in church. We're talking about building something. You better make sure you're building off the right foundation and nobody is shocked, you know, when this thing go down. So you got to go back and look and say, okay, wait a minute now. Who, who, okay, ho- hold on now. What is mom doing right here? Now, we love mom, but you was instructed to leave and cleave to me, right? Amen. Now, have you cleaved yet? It's been 18 years. Because <laughs> I'm supposed to be right here. I'm, so, I'm, 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 I'm supposed to be right here. And a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of moms are going to realize, oh, the, the, the girls are right here? Why you, why you skip over me? Well, you better go check your beneficiary designations. And things may be going great in your marriage. You still got to look and make sure. Okay, well, you know the credit union, you seen those little things? You know, you know, the insurance and it's $6,000 a month. You say, man, I'm going to go ahead and do the $6,000 a month. Put it on autopilot, let it come out. Who's the beneficiary? Man, I, I, before I got married, I had my older son down there. And you get married. And something happens. And the older son goes, where's this coming from? And the new wife goes, that's supposed to be mine. Old son goes, you ain't, got, you ain't got his blood running through your vein. We love you, stepmom, but we don't love you that much. Let me get back up here. All I'm trying to do is just, just, just get us right. Next slide, uh, Brother Jim. Wealth and riches is all about vision. How far can you see? God has done all he's going to do on the cross for us. It's finished works. If the furthest you can see is overtime, if the furthest you can see is uh, 401k investments, no, 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 I'm, I'm not talking about that. I told you, figure out in your hometown what kind of playground you're going to leave back with your money. What kind of monument are you going to leave in the earth and your righteousness, the Bible says, will endure forever. It will outlast you. Legacy outlasts you. Financial legacy should outlast you. It should outlast one generation. Why? Generational poverty is this right here. You spend all your money up in one generation. Ain't nobody getting nothing. We're not all about that. Next slide. Generational wealth and riches. The key word being generational. It is legacy driven. Legacy driven. Legacy driven. When I think about legacy, this name comes to mind. Number one, number one is not Jeff Bezos. Wow, I, I, where's his sons at? Where's his grandkids running anything at? It's not him. I, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I don't think about what, what, Bill Gates. I don't even think about Bill Gates. Where's his sons at? What, what, what? I'm talking legacy. I don't even think about Warren Buffett. Where, anything from his sons? Are they, where are they at? Matter of fact, I heard him say, I don't think he's going to leave them a million dollars. That's going to be it. Fend, fend your own way. And you're worth 50-some billion dollars. Man, please. Just break them kids off something. When I think about legacy, here's who I think about. God told me, they be more careful. Somebody told me yesterday, I changed that out, and that baby is dry as a dirt road. I got to go with the green marker. When I think about legacy, I think about Henry Ford. I think about old Sam. Walton. Why? Because they're sons, 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 daughters, 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 four generations, five generations, six generations deep still running that thing that's in the earth. So thank God for the Bezos. Thank God for Amazon. Thank God. But but, but, but we got to step back and go, okay, now where's the, what are you passing down here? What's going to outlast you? If you go home to be with the Lord, if you're born again, does, does it just fall all over the place? Or are you like Henry Ford, who sold my great-granddaddy a car? Who sold your great-grandmama a car? And those sons and daughters and grandsons are still running that corporation. Somebody say, how far can I see? So you got to think legacy-driven. So... Jeff Marviante, always make sure, check those markers, that they're ready to go. So I said, my God, you, hey, <laughs> they know. So, so here I am. Here's the queen bee. And what spun off of queen bee Marv and Lady Zaza. 
So, so now Proverbs 13, 22 says, okay, if you're going to get into generations, you're only one deep, Derek. You're only one deep with your kids. <laughs> Just one. And this can get complicated for this guy who's kind of spread out. So you got to make sure that if, you, if you've married to the, for the third time or for the fourth time, whatever it is, you got to make sure when you sit down that you put all the cards on the table. You say, hey, man, I, I got a kid over here by her. I got a daughter by him and, and by her. And I got two, over, two twins. And, and you got to make sure you put it out there because when you sit down and do this generation wealth plan, you got to make sure that your generations are taken care of. So this is generation number one. Marv, who has no kids now. No kids. No kids. Zaria has no kids now. No kids. So what is Derek and Zephyr doing? Well, we're teaching them the character of money, the soberness of money. We're teaching them, and if you watch them, they don't walk through this ministry like they're, they're in control. <laughs> We're teaching them, no, 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 we, we don't roll like that. We don't float through like grand kahunas and grand poobahs. We, 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 don't, we, don't, we, we don't do that. We, we, we don't flow like that. Uh, you, know, I, <laughs> you know, some ministers, you go, you go there, and, 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 and the daughter don't even read a Bible, don't even know Genesis if you've seen it, and she's correcting everybody in the church. Oh, don't go to you stirring up more trouble than anything. Sit your tail down, and you get the word, too. You're not exempt from the word. Your daddy's preaching or your mama's preaching. Sit your tail down, and you got to do the same thing. So they don't walk through this church with their head held. Huh? But here's what I do know. They're learning some stuff. Not from this church, but from us too. Why? Wow, we take time to show them. We take time to sit down and say, this is what this means, this is what this means, this is what this means. So we're funding. We're going about 30% here. About 40% here. Watch this now. We're down here. With our trust. We, we, we already said generation one, generation two, generation three. Why we're here. And I got to teach you, Marvion Tate, how to handle it. I got to teach you, Zaria, how to keep it building. I got to teach you how to do it. Why? Because, because, because right now, they just started their plan. Right? They got their own insurance. They got their own little estate plan. They got their own thing going. And right now, we step back and go, okay, now let's get your, let's get your kids that's not even here ready. Let's, let's get you set up. Why? We got to get this in the fabric of the bloodline, in the DNA of the bloodline that we just don't earn to show out and, and, and be sharp every day. We earn to give, we earn to live, and we earn to leave, and, and, and you got to get that in. So we're, 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 and you can do the same thing. <laughs> we're one, two, three. Watch this. How far can you see? It's legacy driven. Houses you didn't build are happening right now. I don't know what you're going to name your daughter. I don't know what you're going to name your son. But houses they didn't build, we're building them for them right now. Lands they didn't plow, we're doing it for them right now. That's why, I, you know, should you tithe under the grace message, should you not tithe? Man, are you still on that? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Render unto the Lord according to how you prosper. Mr. the greatest heart revealer. <laughs> Pastor Dollar say, leave folks alone. It's their heart and God's judgment. Leave them alone. Let, let, let them go. Man, I don't see it where I got to. Well, leave them alone. You're in control of your seed. Your seed is your future. You go ahead and do what you want to do. This is heart driven. How good has God been to you? How good has he been to you? That should provoke you to release. And if they're not releasing, leave them alone. It's them and God. And they'll answer to God. They'll answer to God. So one generation, two generations, three generations. How far can you see? So some of you right now have kids in tender feet. They're six years old. And you're going to work. All I'm trying to tell you, once you get this plan in place, once you get this plan in place, now you're earning to leave. <laughs> totally different ball game now. Now your conversations are different. Your conversations are different. So Instagram, Instagram says, we're going to introduce Instagram TV. 
Millennials go, woo, woo, woo. Well, what, is, what does that mean to you? I'll tell you what it means. If you're a generational focus, you go, how much is Facebook shares per share? How, how, how much is that? Because everybody's bra- raving about how many, who got so many followers and Instagram is doing this now and how long the video is now. They're talking down here. I'm generationally wealth focused. This thing is here to stay. So what am I going to do? When you're generationally focused, you hear differently. You go, hold on, wait a minute now. Um, Amazon, man, they dropping off packages at your house. They got cameras. They got independent drivers. They got all this stuff. They can see you when they drop it off. Oh, Bezos is just a, a logistical genius. Oh, he's taking over the world. What does that mean to you? Are you just bragging about what he's doing? Or are you sitting back going, wait a minute, honey. My God, how many times have we said this? Boy, my grandparents would have got some Coca-Cola stock. Man, I wouldn't be going to this job today. If my grandparents would have got their Home Depot stock, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't. Well, let me tell you something. It's right in front of you right now. And until you can look down that road and get legacy driven, this is not the end all be all, but it's got to be a part of your plan. Why? Because Wall Street makes the money for us. Wall Street controls your retirement. Hedge fund managers move money around so that teacher and that police officer can retire. They make sure that happens. So you got to pay attention to them. So they say, oh, man, Bezos, oh, my God, he's just so off the chain. Oh, my God. Oh, did you get the Apple 10? Did did you do it? Did you see how this facial recognition and all this? Oh, did you get it? And I'm saying to myself, church, believers, would you please get legacy-driven and legacy-focused? Do you understand that those shoes on your feet, you could have had one share? You understand that vacation you charged on that card because you was depressed and you you and all this kind of stuff and you thought hyper consumption was going to fix it. Do you understand what you could have done with that money to move your legacy forward? Somebody says, this sounds like a stock class. It ain't no stock class. I'm just trying to get you to say, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to get you to see that as a believer, God says, listen, I'm putting several things in front of you now. To, to find this generation of wealth and wealth and riches. I'm trying to show you outside of selling the house for dollars, get your head in the game on what's going on around you. And, 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 and if, you're thinking about your, your, if you're thinking about your kids, kids, you go, well, how much will Facebook stock be worth if I get 10 shares a year for 18 years? I'm at 180 shares. It's 190 a share now. Man, my grandkids, what if it's, what if it's $2,500 a share? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Somebody got looked down the road and said, you know what? Hmm. One share a month may not do nothing for me, but for my kids, kids are not even here yet. They're not going to have the Home Depot, Coca-Cola, IBM, all this talk. Dad, where were you at? <laughs> what were you thinking about when Coca-Cola was? What? Because it was two bucks a share, one bucks a share. But our grandparents weren't exposed to it. Our parents weren't exposed to it. So what am I saying? And when you get legacy driven, you find out who's behind, who's driving this economy. Who, 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 who is, he it goes, it goes, here's what you got to do. I'm driving a, I'm driving, you got to say, I'm driving, I'm driving a Ford <laughs> F-250. <laughs> and I got Ford stock. Why? Because if I give you money every 30 days, I promise you, I'm going to own some of you. Somebody says, I put on deodorant this morning. If I put on deodorant this morning and I give you money for this secret platinum, clear, whatever it is, if I do that, I'm going to own some Procter & Gamble. It's not against my rights as a believer to do that. I'm honoring God, but I'm generationally focused now. <laughs> so, so what are you saying? You may have a $200 cable bill a month with Comcast. What I'm saying is, when you get legacy driven, you downgrade that puppy to Sling TV for $25 a month. And you say, okay, the other one, $75, I'm going to buy some Comcast stock at $40 a piece. I'm going to get three of those a month, and I watch how Comcast benefits me and my generations. But people don't want to think like that because, they, oh, it's just too simple. No, it's too complicated. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's time off, sitting there with Fidelity, sitting there with a Vanguard rep, Sitting there with somebody and go, okay, let's, let, 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 let's, let's go ahead and roll with this. Show me, show me, show me how to do this. And you can also self-learn what I'm talking about. When you get generationally wealth-focused, you realize there's more to 
earning money than just getting a paycheck, looking at the net pay, and going on about my business. I got to own some stuff. Do you hear what I'm saying? I got to own some stuff. And all we're saying is don't get so caught up in your little profit that your profit ain't doing nothing for you. It's you just hoarding it up. And then something comes along, and like, like, like the Bible says, Proverbs 23 to, uh, 5, it says, wealth and riches grow wings. Something else got that money when we should have been generationally focused, generation wealth focused, and purchase stuff. Somebody says, are you, are you advertising purchasing stock in, 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 in that pulpit? No, I'm not advertising purchasing. What I'm advertising is, you better get your research on. Because <laughs> while you, while you on your Facebook all the time, I love to see users at it. Me and my family, I love to see new features. I love to see Facebook TV and all that kind of stuff. Why? We own some of the company. Why? We get, we get shares every single month. And we deny ourselves the pleasures of life in some areas to make sure we're legacy driven now. We're not going to sit here and rave about how this is facial recognition and the news feed and tagging everybody on every vacation we go on and ain't got a dime of in, in, in the company. We're not going to do that as believers. So what do we say <clears throat> in closing? What do we say in closing? Generational wealth. Next week, we're going to start with the four constants. You don't want to miss that. Week after that, we'll close it out with the KPIs, financial KPIs. <clears throat> dying without a will. Dying without a will or, or a more extensive plan. Watch this. Only brings further grief to your family. It brings further grief to your family. We focus more on passing down recipes than we do generational wealth. <laughs> Grandma, how you make that? Write it down for me now. How, how, how do you make that? Rev Advocate, write it down for me now. I, I want to make sure I got it so my kids can partake of it. And what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, flip that over on the generational wealth side. How do you, how do, you do that so my kids can, can partake of this generational wealth? <clears throat> Legacy-minded people are working to build something that speaks for them long after they're gone. Every season Jordans come out, I make sure my kids have them. Them Jordans can't speak when you're gone. You know what can speak when you're gone? Nike stop. You gotta, we, we, as believers, we got to change the way we, 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 we feed our kids luxuries. Dad, what did you get me for my birthday? Five shares of Sprint. Where's that? She said, Come here, let me show you. It'll mean something to you later on. Dad may be gone, but I got to teach you how to live when I'm here, and I got to teach you how to live when I'm gone. It's, it's going to mean something to you later on. Let me show you what, what, what this means. <clears throat> now, my kids got yours, I got yours. Not at the expense of my plan, though. It ain't going to happen. <clears throat> Legacy minded people are working to build something that speaks for them long after they're gone. Glory to God. Hmm. The most damaging, <clears throat> this is long, but we gotta, we got to finish this. The most damaging thing to a person's ability to set their generations up. Now, we're in July. How much conversation have you had about your generations? Seven months. How much conversation have you had about spending money and saving money? Think about that as small talk. The devil does a very good job at distracting us from the next level. How does he distract us? With small pleasures. Doesn't mean nothing. Could be gone tomorrow. Why? We didn't bring nothing in this world. Sure. I mean, we, we, sure. we didn't bring nothing in. We didn't take nothing out. Well, my God, what matters? What you leave. Can't take it with you. You didn't bring nothing in. Can't take it with you. So what matters? What you leave. The most damaging thing to a person's ability to set their generations up is sometimes, watch this, more than enough coming in with an unrenewed mind to generational wealth. The most damaging thing to a person's ability or a family or a couple or a teenager or a young adult to set their generations up is sometimes more than enough coming in with an unrenewed mind to generational wealth. It takes reading 
It takes a commitment to say, man, I don't see these grandkids he's talking about, but I'm going to start funding them. What is that going to cost you? Well, I got to pull back here. I got to pull back here. I really believe in generational wealth. And that statement is evident in your plan, not your mouth. Not what you're saying. Yeah, our baby's one year old. This, this, this. Okay, if something happens to you, where, where, where is she at? Where is he at? What do they got? What do they got? Oh, man, I got to update my, my life. I got to update my will to make sure she, or make sure he gets some. Man, it's been a year. Let me tell you something. If you got a will and trust in place, when that baby pops the wound, set an appointment to go get with that attorney. Hey, we had four. We got five now. Got to add one to it. Oh, you got a new hurricane? Yep, a new hurricane. No, I ain't got no new hurricane. I used to regret that five years ago, but today, me and my wife talked about responsibility and this and that. I said, hey, hey, I love little anchor biters, but 18 years of, I love them. I got Skylar. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got, I got, I got, I got Skylar. I, I got the Harris's baby. I, I got all these little, I got little John. I, 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 I got enough little pe- precious people that, you know, love dearly and all this kind of stuff. But 18 more years? So we looked at one another and said, hey, hey, boy, this, no, 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 I, I, I just, now if you caught me back here, like 27, 26, man, it'd have been like popcorn, but right now, I, we, we just say, we say we choose our freedom over, I, I, I just, I'm just, a sweetheart, we're just not ready for that response, I, I'm just, thank God for the babies, I, I'm just not ready, I just don't want to. I do regret when I was 25, 26, nobody came to me and said, hey, man, go ahead and pop them out now. I regret it, but not to the point where, let me go ahead and, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> I don't. It sounds good. It sounded good. She was like, are you serious? I said, she said, hey, I was thinking about, I said, no, no, she said, you ain't thinking. <laughs> you ain't thinking. I said, let's just get honest with one another here. I said, what about this? What about this? Now, you got to stop doing that. And what, I mean, what, 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 what? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. We'll love on other folks' babies. We'll let the little whipples pop out babies. We'll love on them. We'll, just, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let Brother Jones keep popping out babies. We'll let <laughs> Candace is coming. She, 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 she's coming later on when she gets married. And we got Nicole Radish when she gets married. All these young folks, Chris, all y'all look, y'all, all y'all popping them out. This thing that Marvion Tate, Zaria, your time is coming. And the church is waiting. We're, we're, we're waiting on you. But, but <laughs> warming up bottles, late night and Mad at folks who they want babysitting, help me out, and all this stuff. My wife can't go with me here. My wife can't go with me there. And, man, it's just good. Grace is a God. I know kids are good, but right now, I just don't want that responsibility. I just don't want it. Let me get back up here. She came to me with that stuff. I was like, man, please. What are you talking about? 25, 26. I, no way. Are you speaking against baby? I'm not speaking. I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you got to know what, you, what you're signing up for. I said, well, shoot, what? From 35 to 60, that's 25 years that you got to be building now for your generations. Man, I throw in a set of twins in that. Man, it's, 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 I, hey, they're God's gift, but not, not, not for the homeboy right now. <laughs> or the homegirl. I'm not speaking against nobody's wishes and what you want to do. Go do what you want to do, but you better sit down and factor that thing in. <clears throat> okay. So money with no regard for the future or the present eventually gets wasted. Money with no regard for the future or the present, we're talking about generation wealth, eventually it gets wasted. Not only does the devil want us to shun principles while enough and extra is present in our lives, not only does he want us to shun principles while, while shun God's principles while enough and extra is present in our lives, he wants us to shut down the thought of generational wealth and bestow it in our bank accounts. And he goes, you're in another class now. You're not the lower class. You're not the middle class. You're not the middle upper. You're not the upper class. Well, what are you when you're doing that? Just sitting there circling the comfortable poor. You just got extra laying around just in case you want to wash and dryer. It's okay. You never want for a meal or nothing like that. You're just circling. But there's other people who go, I'm legacy driven. <laughs> I'm building this to, to, just to pass it down. 
I don't just tie my kid's shoestring 20 times when they run in the garage. I stop them and go, let me show you how to tie your shoestrings. And if I can show you how to tie your shoestrings, you won't keep running in this house aggravating me. So we got to slow down so we can speed up and go, oh, guys, you got your first job. Let's, let's sit down now. Hold, 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 hold on now. And you may discover, I don't want that. All right. Hard hit. We'll make a soft be high. When you're ready, I'll be here. That's what you got to say as a parent. Oh, my gosh. Have mercy, Jesus. 1225. Can I have five more minutes? I just want to finish this up. <clears throat> uh, Psalms 39. Psalm 39. You should walk out of here going, man, God's got my back. God's working on, uh, on my behalf behind the scenes. God bless me with this job. God bless me with this ability, this skill. And I got to slow down and speed up. So let me just kind of figure out. Yes, I got one salon. How do I get five? Uh, yes, I'm right here, middle management right now. And I'm not going to get an anxiety and worry, this, that, and the other. But I got I to pause and go, God, what, what, what would you have for me? Because I know there's profit where you want me to be. So before I, before I put all my eggs into this company's basket, you need, lead me and guide me in the way you want me to go because I'm, I, I, I'm headed for generational wealth. Psalms 39, verse 6. Surely every man walketh in vain shall. Surely they are disquieted in vain. Well, why, how are they disquieted in vain? Because he heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. You know what it's saying? People are going out investing in their 401ks and investing in their businesses and building their businesses, and they don't even know who's going to inherit it. And wives are going rah, 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 and don't even know, okay, where's the inheritance at? What's the back end plan? Just in case you stop earning. There's something called the chief earner of the house. He or she, they're the chief earner. And Estate planning guys call, they say, look, uh, you're the chief guy uh, in this company. You're the chief guy uh, 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 in this church. They call it a key man policy. What do they say? You're the key guy. You're going to have a policy. I'll never forget my pastor told me. He said, uh, he said listen, uh, just in case you didn't know, no one's coming to see you. I was in London one time. I said, I got to have five suits. I got to have a blue suit. Uh, silver suit, a uh, 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 black suit. I got to have a white shirt. There's some red tie, power ties, blue. I, I want to go over there. And, and, and a guy said, uh, you're not preaching. Take two suits, a black one, blue one. Just change ties. You're not preaching. What was he saying? You're not the key guy. But I tell you what, if you got a chief earner in your household, they're the chief earner. They're what they call the key man. What is it saying? The key man? <laughs> you better have some stuff in line. God forbid something happens to him or her. God forbid something happens to him. What is that saying? Listen, don't be heaping up riches and don't know who's going to get what. You got to, look, feed her, feed him, serve them, take care of them, encourage them, love them, make it easy for them. But know this, know this, don't take them for granted. Don't do that. Why? They're the key man that's making this thing go. That's not to shame nobody. It's just to say, hey, when you talk, approach it like this. You're the key guy. We got to make sure you're taken care of. That's why when daddy pulls up, train those boys to run out of that door and go hug on him. Why? <laughs> you know, daddy walking, they've been working all day, pulling that money in. You know, everybody will need to sit down on the couch when he come in. That wife, that mom need to train him. Hey, 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 hey. Go out there and meet your daddy. Make sure, make, make sure you know, you massage his shoulders, uh, daughter. Make sure he's taking. Oh, oh, why would I want to do that? Because he's the key man in this house. Amen. It's not out of pride, but he's the key guy. Now, if we take him out of the equation, God will still kick, take care of us, but stuff changes. <laughs> it, it shifts very fast. So you got to make sure you know who the chief earner is in the house. Otherwise, we're heaping up riches, and it's like, who gets them? No one even knows anything about, about the riches that we're, we're heaping up. Psalms 112. Be more careful. Man, we're just talking about your money. Gosh, man, I'm impatient about talking about money. Well, I'll tell you what, money going to talk to you later on. And it won't be impatient. (laughs) 
Psalms 12. Praise be the Lord. <clears throat> Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, verse 1, that delighteth greatly in his commandments, verse 2. His seed, somebody say generations. generations. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. In other words, life should get easier for your seed. Life should get easier for your seed. Some people believe in, like Warren Buffett, well, my kids are going to work for this, and I'm telling you, they're going to work for it. And boy, that sounds good. That's your principle. Go with it, go with it, go with it, go with it. But other people go, I put character in my kids. And whereas a lot of people have earning in that equation, you're going to earn this, this, this. Other people go, no, I reward. I reward my seed. How, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to buy their first car. Why would you do that? Oh, my God, they made straight A's all the way through high school. <laughs> I'm going to make sure they got a fridge and everything in college. Second year college, I'm going to make sure they got a car. Why? I'm a rewarder. I'm like God. Some people say, my dad said, look, take what you got to do, buddy. If you're going to do this, this. And, man, it was hard. And I learned some stuff. Thank God for it. But I don't want to learn falling off the bicycle. Sometimes I want to just, 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 just help me out, Dad. <laughs> Just help me out, Mom. My God, you, you see what I'm, 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 I'm straight A's here. I'm, I'm National Honor Society. I'm, I'm, I'm all this. Get some kind of rewarding in your system because if it's all demand-based for me to do good and I still got to earn, one day I'm going to look up at 25 and realize I just don't need your advice no more. <laughs> I really don't need it no more. Why? Because, 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 because I want to reward my kids for doing well. Let me just stop right there. I learned it the hard way myself. So says, your seed shall be mighty. Watch this. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. We got we to gotta build right and we got to live right. We got to live right before our kids. We got to put a good character, in, present a good character in front of them. Verse 3, wealth, and what happens is wealth and riches shall be in his house. Somebody say generational wealth. And his righteousness, what he puts in the earth, the playground, the building, the trust. The plaque, the, 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 the basketball court, the, the library, the, 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 the community center, the, 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 the plot of land for, to bury his family. He, he bought two acres for his family to be buried there. His generations, guess what? Long after he's gone, his righteousness is enduring forever. Who bought this land? Oh, uh, three generations, I bought it. That's, that, that, that's who did that. My God, who put a playground right here in uh, Grandmama's backyard in, in her house? Oh, you don't know who did that? He wanted to make sure that we keep coming here every single year, so he put a pool and a playground back there. Look at that plaque out there on the, on the thing. Uh, uh, Uncle so-and-so did that. What is that? His, what he put in the earth is outliving him. And a generation's come and go, tell me about him. He's not here, but tell me about him. And he said, I can't say much, but here's what I will say. He's speaking from the grave because what we're eating from right now, he built it while he was here. Do you hear what I'm saying? God have mercy. I'm wrapping up. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I swear I'm finishing. Oh, Lord. Oh, gosh. Shoot. <laughs> I remember my pastor used to say that. I'm finishing, I'm finishing, I'm finishing. And I knew, keep your pen to that thing. Because one word can come out and change your life. I, I, I knew it. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Listen to me. <laughs> Paying bills has zero impact on building wealth. Paying monthly bills has zero impact on building generational wealth. Zero. Zero impact. So get that out of the way ASAP. Put it on autopilot. Let them come in your bank on the fifth of the month. Pay all your bills. Get it out of the way. It has zero. It has nothing to do with building wealth. If you're going to build wealth, listen to me. Either you're going to pay interest or earn interest. Either you're going to pay interest all your life or earn interest. What is that? If you're going to pay Visa every month or have Visa stop. If you're going to pay MasterCard every month or have MasterCard stop. You're going to pay interest or you're going to earn it. Got to make your mind up to hit generational wealth. People who build generational wealth don't earn money to pay bills only. They look around the corner. They're, 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 they're building something. They don't earn money to pay bills only. On Friday, they're not talking about paying bills. They're not. We train people in pathways. We train them. Spend 30 minutes a month on your bills. That's all you should be spending on them. Why? They're going to keep coming every 30 days. It's not different. 
You know what's coming, right? <laughs> you know what's coming every month, right? So how are you missing it this month? I'll tell you how you're missing it this month. You took your tail to Cancun, you had no business going to Cancun, and you should have paid your bills. That's what you should have did. Why? You, you forsake your responsibility to go out here and be extravagant, and now you're paying the price next month. You knew they were coming, and you got to stop doing that. Number three, if, you, if, if, if you're ever going to build uh, generational wealth, you can't earn money to spend money only. There's a big difference in paying bills and spending money. You don't pay bills, stuff get cut off. Stuff get taken away. But when you spend money, you subscribe to emails, and you get on a little Nike thing, and you get on the van shoes thing, and, 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 you, and you're, just, you're just surfing to spend your money. Don't earn money to spend it only. Don't look forward to the sale on Saturday. Park that doggone car. Get in that, get in that, pull that car out of that garage. Wash those cars that day. You, you, you wash your windows. I was, I was cleaning windows yesterday, squeezing windows. Squeezing from windows. And I got my little ortho and sprayed. I got, I got Terminix too. I sprayed. I said, I spray. This is, this is, this is, this Oh, I got to go, go in the garage and do this. this. Oh, I got to, man, I got to, man. Look at my tires. I got some new tires. I got to get them thing. Money, I got to get those weights right. I told the guy, I said, you never balance tires, a custom wheel, and put the weight on the outside of the wheel. Man, put that thing back. I don't want that thing showing. So, so I spent about six to eight hours, and the next thing I look up, it's dark. I went out spending money. Oh, I came up to the church, mopped some floors, mopped floors, went out with one of my spiritual sons, went to Burger Fi. We sat down. I said, you ready for this? He said, what? I said, let's talk about generational wealth. I said that before we start eating, and next thing I know, I forgot about it. Walking in the parking lot, lightning struck. I said, oh, by the way, here's what you want to do. He said, my God, I didn't even see that. I said, trust me. I said, we'll meet next week. I'm going to show you how to do it, and you're going to be, you're, 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 in six months, you'll be worth 600 grand. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to do it, but it'll be net worth. I'm going to show you, though. So after that, I went home, and I started studying. What do I spend yesterday? I treated, let's see. No, he wouldn't let me pay. He paid $32, a burger fire. Lady got irritated with us because he was back and forth at the register. Let me pay. Let me pay. put your card up. <laughs> and it wasn't no fake. Let me pay. Either. A lot of guys fake. I, I got you. Ain't got nothing. <laughs> Stop. Listen. If you're gonna build generational wealth, earn money to invest money. <clears throat> I really figured I really like I really like being a father. <laughs> I really like showing men how to. I just really like doing that. We can talk about the word, but, but my strength is, 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 of course, we talk about the word, and this is, this, but my strength is, let me, can, can I just guide you here? Can, can I just show you this? I know we love God. We got, we got, the, we got the grace, but, but can I show you this? Yeah, man, show me. Okay, I, I, there you go. And then, and then you get a chance to see them blossom. I go, man, look at that. Look at that right there. I like that. I love it. I love it. I just do. Earn money to invest money. Number, uh, keep going. Earn money to save money. The people with generational wealth, you're going to earn money to save money. You just can't earn and spend. You got to earn money to save some money too. You got to earn money to honor God. <laughs> Honoring God's got to be in that equation. I don't think there's any way a believer can achieve generational wealth by not honoring God. Not in the sense that God will put a curse on you, but if you don't believe in God's economy, if you don't believe, if, if you confess him, Lord of lords and Lord of the harvest, and you don't believe in that economy, I can't even see you seeing down the road in generational wealth. Why? Because when they say it's going to cost you 1200 bucks to find that generational wealth plan, I can't see you doing that. You may think it's a waste of money. In closing, <laughs> third one. Answer these questions uh, this week. How much are we saving? How much are we investing? How much are we saving? How much are we investing? How much are we earning? Watch this. How much are we spending? How much are we saving? How much are we investing? How much are we earning? How much are we giving? How much are we spending? How much does it require for us to have a baseline functional lifestyle? How much money does it take to fund our lifestyle? So you're going to answer those questions. How much are we saving? How much are we investing? How much are we earning? How much are we giving? How much are we spending? How much does it require for us to fund our baseline uh, uh, lifestyle? Here's what I want you to do. X out baseline lifestyle. Once you, once you go down these and ask yourself this question, where's our heart at? 
when we see those numbers, where's our heart at? No one will wiggle out of this. <laughs> you sit down with your wife, sit down with your husband. You know, a husband may go, this is all we're giving. And a wife may be, her, her, her socks may be shocked off. A wife may go, well, this, this is all we're giving. And the husband's socks may be shocked off. Or his heart may be revealed. Oh, we, give more, we, we do this more than we give. I'm fine with that. After all, the Old Testament says this and the New Testament says, oh, okay. That's fine. You're still going to heaven. But you're going to, get, you're going to get a chance to discover where you are. So when you write those down, cross out the baseline functionality because we know your daily needs got to be met. We know you got to finance your lifestyle. But when you go, how much are we saving? How much are we investing? How much are we earning? How much are we giving? How much are we spending? The Bible says where your heart is, your treasure's there. It's right there. The purpose of this generational wealth, wealth and riches and generational wealth teaching at the end was to show us either our heart is in generational wealth building or this will reveal to us where it is, where your treasure is. It will reveal to you. And don't get discouraged because God is saying, hey, I got you. Now, what do you want to do? You're going to go to heaven either way it goes. Do you just want to circle and save your money and really look at that number and you feel good about yourself as a believer? That's what I want to do. Okay, go ahead and do it. Ask the other guy, do you want to build generational wealth? Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Uh, I want to go five generations deep. Don't be shocked if you get a witty and mention in two years. Because now your heart, God, God knows your heart is in this thing. He goes, man, where's all these promotions coming from? Man, we never seen all this coming. Where did this business come from? God says, look, you wanted to get this thing in the earth, and I partner with you to do it. Hallelujah. Amen? Were well, you blessed by the word of God? Amen. We'll pick up next week. We'll pick up next week with the four constants of finances. You bring a family member, bring a relative, bring a friend. They want to be here uh, next week. Glory to God. Let me get my prayer counselors down front.